Okay, now, so when we're naming ionic compounds, we're going to first learn about cations, then we're going to learn about anions, and we're going to classify cations into three areas. Okay, that doesn't mean that they're physically much different, some of them in some ways, some of them are. But this, the first category and the second category are physically the same kind of uh, structure, but in terms of naming, we're going to separate them into two kinds of cations, okay? So if you'll get out your test references, and let's find your, well, what is the reference you look up oxidation numbers on? Where do you find oxidation numbers? Huh? I don't know. I don't know how yours is set up. What's the name of the chart? Somebody said common chart. Ions, no, common. not common ions. We had to do it when you made your element cubes. There it is. That's what you had to use to make your element cube. Unit 2. We're now in unit 4. Okay. Hmm? I want you to use this because you've got to use this in the test. Okay. So find your test references. This is a an instruction I'm giving you to get out your test references. Okay? Get out your test references and use them and practice with them so that when it comes time to use them on the test, you'll be better equipped to use them. Okay? I mean, you'd never go up and, in a baseball game and try to swing at a pitch if you've never picked up a bat, would you? Yeah. So you don't want to use... You would... <laughs> um, but so you want to use the test references frequently so you get used to using them. Uh, over there on top of the filing cabinet. Okay. I want you to find on here elements. Tell me where I can find elements that have only one oxidation number. On the far left. Okay. So the first two columns have only one oxidation number. You see that? The first two columns only have one oxidation number? Well, there's only one oxidation number here. <coughs> For magnesium. Now the first three, okay. Okay. Well, we're not looking for those that have two, but since you bring that up, and everybody needs to listen carefully, you need to listen carefully. Hydrogen has only one positive oxidation number, so it can be included. You understand? Hydrogen can be included because it only has one positive oxidation number. Okay, if we're using the positive oxidation number, it's going to be written first, and so it will always qualify as having only one pot, one oxidation number in this context. Okay? Because it's the cation. The cation is the positive part. Got it? Mm -hmm. Alright. So the first three columns are all cations with only one, one oxidation number. Do you see any others? They don't have one oxidation number? Yeah. Yeah. What others would you see do you see that have only one oxidation yeah. number? What did you say? B and A L, boron and aluminum. Okay, those only have one oxidation number. Gallium. Okay. What did you say? Iron. Oh, I N, indium. Okay. Okay. Z N. Okay. Cadmium. Acetine. Um, he, this has three ox, three, two, two positive oxidation numbers. Cadmium. Okay, now look, I'm talking about only one positive oxidation number. That doesn't mean they're only in the box. I mean anything that only has one positive oxidation number. So nickel's one. All right, now <coughs> monoatomic with only one positive oxidation number. Whether it's in a box or not, doesn't matter. Okay? Alright. <clears throat> the, 
these are named just like the element. So, in an ionic compound, Mg2 plus is magnesium. Zn2 plus is zinc. Okay. Um, Y3 plus is yttrium. Okay. Does that make sense? They just named just exactly like they appear on the periodic table. Got that so far? <clears throat> so those are the simplest ones right there. That's pretty easy. Yttrium. Yeah. A Y on the beginning of a word is pronounced like an I. Correct. I mean, usually it is. There's, there's some exceptions, I'm sure. That's well. But see, Y on the beginning of a... Well, okay. So Y immediately in front of a, con a consonant is pronounced I. So, But Y in front of a vowel is pronounced Y. Yeah. You're right. Okay. So I, didn't, I didn't get the complete rule, did I? But I don't teach English, so... What? You still need it? Really? Uh -huh. to monoatomic <coughs> cations where the atom has more than one oxidation number. Okay. All right, get back to your periodic table of oxidation numbers. And let's find some atoms, some elements that have more than one, in this case, positive oxidation number, because it has to be a cation, it has to be positive. Which of the elements do you see? Give me some examples of elements that have more than one positive oxidation number. <coughs> Fe, iron, has more than one positive oxidation number has a 3 plus and a 2 plus oxidation number. Copper has two oxidation numbers, a 2 plus and a 1 plus. Yes? Is there a way to, by telling you to run your free dollar table without using those, and you can run it to be a way to show the price. But he didn't give us it, like we had to figure it out. There are some patterns, but there are so many exceptions to the pattern that I, we're going to go over what the pattern is, but I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to make you finish the understand the pattern in here. Okay. All right. What? From Somebody said CU. CU is copper, by the way. What? From uh, from seventy. Wait. Oh, seventy six through. Uh, okay. So everything from osmium all the way over to bismuth. All of those have more than one positive oxidation number. Niobium. Niobium. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Okay, uh, tungsten. Okay, what else? Um, Ni we said niobium. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it could be. 
We don't actually use it in that way, but it, I mean, just given the rules I've given you so far, you could call it that. Okay. Huh? Krypton? Yeah, well, Krypton, we're not going to use it as an... It, it does have more than two. You're right. But we're not going to use it as a cation. Okay, it's all, it only does coupling up bonding. How about these up here? My, my gracious alive. How many oxidation numbers have we got up here? Five of them. Five of them here. Okay. All right, now. <clears throat> when we have a monoatomic cation where the atom has more than one oxidation number, there's a different rule that applies, okay? <clears throat> Oops, elements. These are named like the element, but with a Roman numeral in parentheses. To indicate which cation, you can think of this as meaning which charge. is being used. <clears throat> so, in an ionic compound, <clears throat> FE or iron, 3 plus, is called iron 3. Fe 2 plus is called Iron two. <clears throat> Molybdenum six plus is called Molybdenum six. <coughs> mm -hmm. Here, I said that when we indicate which cation, I'm indicating here by that which charge. There's more, more than one cation, like iron three and iron two, are two different cations, and it's indicating which charge. When I say more than one cation, I'm talking about the kind of charges they have. What does that have a negative charge? We're not talking about negative charges right now, because right now we're only talking about cations. Okay, cations are positively charged. We'll get to the negative stuff in a minute. Okay? Molybdenum. Mm -hmm. no. Didn't you know that molybdenum is one of the three stooges? No. What are the three, sto three stooges' names? On your periodic table. Okay. Oh, 
There is no space. between the element name and the parentheses. Okay? Sometimes you have to figure out what the cat eye name is from the formula. <clears throat> hmm? Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing it up. Cobalt, which is CO. Now be careful. Some some people tend to write everything in all capital letters, or write their letters don't differentiate in the size. Okay. If you write C capital O, that's not cobalt. Right. So make sure that the first letter in an element symbol is capitalized, and if there is a second or third letter, those are lowercase and clearly lowercase, okay? If there is a difference between the uppercase and the lowercase structure or drawing, make sure you show that. Do not write a capital H and a lowercase h the same way, okay? All right, or an A, capital A and lowercase A are two different structures, so make sure you write them that way. Now, cobalt then has two oxidation numbers. Three plus and two plus. You have to figure out which one is in this formula. So, to figure out which one is in the formula, we're going to undo the process we use to write balance formulas. It's the same thing, just going backwards. Remember when we're writing balanced formulas, when we're doing ionic formulas anyway, we wrote down the charge numbers on the first thing, the charge numbers on the second thing, and figured out how many of each we needed to get a zero charge overall. Remember that process? Huh? Okay. So what we're going to do is undo that process. All right. So let's find out. We don't know which charge right now cobalt has. Do we know which charge chlorine has? Well, let's look at it. Here's chlorine. Is there a two there? Well, chlorine has seven different charges. How do we know which one to use? That since we have to have a an overall neutral charge, and cobalt only has positive charges, the only way to get a neutral charge is if chlorine has a negative charge. Is there anyone who doesn't, anyone who doesn't understand why? Mathematically, there's no other way to get a zero. So chlorine has to be two negative, I mean one negative, right? So here's chlorine. We know it has to be negative. Here's cobalt. We don't yet know what its charge is going to be. Okay. 
We're going to be putting them together, however, in a way that's going to give us a neutral charged compound when we're done. Now, here's what we do know. We do know that we have how many chlorines? How, huh? Dose, two, okay. Got two chlorines. Well, if we do the math that we did, the same math we did when we were balancing compounds, then we're going to write down the fact that we have one cobalt with some charge we don't yet know. And we're going to add that to that charge to two one negative charges and when we're done the whole thing has to equal zero so what number has to go here to make this math work out to be zero two two plus this is just algebra yeah it's exactly like algebra it's just written in a different way i wish they teach you how to balance compounds in algebra what your algebra teacher? There you go. I wish they teach it in algebra. They do. I wish they teach you to balance compounds in algebra. What I'm saying, or at least show it to you a couple times as an example. Okay. But anyway, here we go. So that means that this cobalt has to have a two plus charge, and when we put this compound together, cobalt Cl, and we got that sub two. It's going to have a two plus charge in the cobalt, so what's the name of this compound then? I mean this ion here. Uh, How did we name these up here? Right, so this is cobalt two chloride. Okay? <clears throat> cobalt to chloride. Would you like to practice another one of these before we move on to the next category? Okay, I see one hand going up and down. Yeah. All right. Would you like to practice this process one more time before I go on to a new category? Okay. You do this one. If you want to talk to a neighbor quietly to try and compare notes, you can do that. But don't just get an answer and write it down. Make sure you understand because you can't do the homework if you don't understand. Where's the balance? No, you're writing the name of it. That's what it says. Name this compound. So pretty much what we did. Just what we just, no, no, no. What we just did here. The homework was all covalent compounds. We're now doing ionic compounds. <coughs> Technetium.